From the next stage, we need to set up the real world parameters of the camera. So if I go over to my installation drawing, first of all, I need to define my camera install height. So our camera will be at two and a half meters off the ground. It will be a four by three aspect. The focal length I'm going to do via horizontal distance. So I want mine to be a 60 degree wide angle and defining a 5 megapixel as my starting point. So from there we can see in our preview a rough image of what it's going to look like. The scene is looking currently at a 23 degree angle so we've got 2.5 meters high. I believe I'm going to have that a lot higher. So I'm going to take that up to a 6 meter high. Now one of the really nice things here is I can go back to my 3D view and get a rough indicator of what it is I'm going to see in the image. So because it's a 2D image it's tried to proportionally stretch it out showing you a person at the start and a person at the distance points so we can get a bit of a feel for it. One of the other aspects I like about this software is it gives you the ability to, to see through these different colors here the different definitions of video quality. So if we just go up and have a look at the zone visualization, we can see that I have identification set to meet Australian standards where we need 365 pixels per meter tall. Basically that results that a face would be 88 pixels in a scene and by using that measure of pixels instead of meters or percent or anything else, it means that whatever the camera resolution we can automatically have the image adjust to match. So each of these is set by color so red is my identification. I haven't accurately defined my recognition, detection and monitoring but you can see that they're different colors. So I can see my identification area is actually very very close to the camera, quite small. So moving on to actually drawing my site plan. So we'll simply draw in some basic parts. So I'm going to draw the roundabout to start with. So we'll put a, a circle there and size that up. So we've got the approximate shape of my roundabout. It's currently saying it's three meters tall. We know that's not the case. We'll say it's about um, 15 centimeters, sorry, 0.15 for the roundabout and it's sitting at ground level to find a color that will make it stand out, red, and in the middle of this particular roundabout there's a nice brick section, so we'll draw another circle for that. And just resizing it, we can make it the right size, and it's slightly taller, so we know that sitting on top of the roundabout at 0.15, oops, wrong spot, 0.15, yeah. We can't set that, we've got to set that one first. So we'll say it's um, about 60 centimeters tall and it's sitting at 0.15. So as I'm doing this, you can start to see that I'm building up a, a scene in the background there. So I'm just gonna go through and draw some curbs and so forth in and then we'll come back to you. So five minutes has passed and we've gone through and we've drawn the different sections that we want. So I've got down here where I've drawn roadways. And you can see as I click on them, they show up on the side map as red. And all we did to draw them was drew a box, specified its height and its color. I've then gone through and drawn footpaths, which are represented by these, these brown areas. So each footpath I've just made subtly higher, higher than the road. I've then drawn in some walls for houses, 2.5 meters off the ground in this case, and on the other side of the road they're up a bit higher, 2 meters off the ground and 4.5 meters high, and these objects through here are just representation of retaining walls, so I've done a couple of different layers of, of rocks and so forth to simulate the retaining wall that sits there. We've also got a light pole, which is in here, it's just drawing a circle and specifying its height. And then I've added objects like cars. So in there we've got a car, and I can rotate that car to face whatever way I want. 
the way I put the car in was click on the person icon, selected car and dumped it in the scene. The same can be done for people, so we'll select a man and I'll stand him on the footpath here. And you can see as I've done that I've already got a couple of other people in the scene. It fills dynamically as we're going.